Okay, so that you might sometimes have played this sort of game where you start with the number one and then you double all the numbers from there. So you can go one, two, four, eight, or sixteen, thirty-two, um, and so on. And you can do that in your head or with a calculator, and the numbers just get really big, of course. And in some ways, it's easier just to think about that first row and to write things as multiples of two. So we can use the index or exponent notation to simplify the fact that four can be written as two to the power of two. We can write those two twos as two to the power of two. And of course, eight is two to the power of three because there it's two times two times two and so on. So we can do all that for these numbers as well. Then we can go back the other way as well. We can write 2 as 2 to the power of 1, and 1 actually is 2 to the power of 0, because any number to the power of 0 is 1. Now what's basically going on here is, as we're going to the right, we are multiplying everything by 2. Or as we're going to the left, we can think of that in the reverse way, that we're dividing the previous term by 2. Um, and of course, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by one half or one over two. So we can use that to continue that sort of sequence to the left in that we can divide the one by two to get the previous term and that would be a half. And then we need a half times a half. We'll just write that as one over four. And then as we continue to go out to the left, we end up with the same numbers that we had before. We've got the 1 over 8, um, the 1 over 16, and the 1 over 32, which are the same numbers that we had in going to the right before. And we can write down the exponents in the same sort of way as well. So we can write a half as 2 to the power of negative 1. The negative, of course, means that the 2 is on the bottom, on the denominator. Um, the 2 to the negative 2 is because that 4 is 2 times 2. So that we've got the same numbers as before, but because they're on the denominator, then they are negative. And so what we can do with this is to rearrange all this into a table. And in our table, we could put the exponents on one side, which we could call, say, x, and we could have the values on the other side. So if our x values were transcribed there from, say, from negative 3 to 3, then we say that 2 to the 3 is 8 and so on. So this is just is rearranging the numbers we had before. And if we put them in a sort of xy table like this, then we could plot them. We can label our x and y axes there, and then we just can plot these as points. So we've got the indices or the exponents on the x-axis. When the indice was negative 3 on this axis, then the value is 1 over 8, because 2 to the negative 3 was 1 over 8. So we can plot that out here. And then as we add in the rest of these points, we can see that they begin to form this curved shape and we can put a curved line that fits nicely through all those points. Now this is actually an exponential graph because it's been derived out of this number pattern where we add another multiple every time. We're increasing the exponent in every term. And so the way to write this graph is y is equal to 2 to the power of x. And this is a particular example of a graph of the form of y is equal to a to the x. So in this particular case, we've got a is equal to 2 because we've been working with powers of 2. What's going on here is that for every step we take to the right, it's like adding another multiple of a. In this case, it's another multiple of 2, but in general, it's another multiple of a. So it's just in this case, a is 2. And for every step to the left, we can think of it as divide the previous value of the y coordinate by 2 um, or by a, which is the same as multiplying by 1 over a. Then we can zoom in on a couple of points to see how that applies again. Every step to the right, we have multiplied the y values by 2, which is the value of a on this particular graph. And every step to the left, we have divided by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half. That's a basic way to think of exponential graphs, is that for each successive point on that graph, we're adding another multiple of a to the calculation of the y value, which is sort of what's happening here. And that leads to the term of exponential growth, which is any sort of growth pattern that can be described with a graph like this, where there's some common multiple between successive terms. It might not be doubling, it might just be increasing by 10% every time, but that's enough for it to be exponential.